Hello and welcome to another episode of the Transportation Exchange Podcast presented by Rush Trucks of Canada. I'm your host, Jason Cuddy. On today's episode, we welcome Paul Karat, who is a learning facilitator at Conestoga College. Paul, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Jason. And thanks for having me. Yes, we wanted to have you on to kind of uh, give us a general overview of the CITT and the CCLP designation. Uh, Maybe quickly give us a quick background on uh, your time in industry. Uh, For sure. I... Um, I've seen, uh, as, as many people in logistics uh, have seen, uh, I've gone many, many paths because no one, certainly in, in, in my generation, got up in the morning and said, hey, I want to be in logistics. <laughs> it just didn't happen. So um, I started uh, out of university with uh, doing a, a production planning with a big, a big equipment mining equipment firm and uh, moved from there to aircraft for to Havland Aircraft, and I'll probably age myself and say that I was responsible for a lot of the troubleshooting on the very, very first Dash 8 wing. Oh, wow. Um, from there, moved to that. And that's when, um, through some friends, through, through networking, I um, I got involved. I was finally hired into transportation for selling um, LTL freight in Ontario and Quebec and eventually into the U.S., and I did that for many years. Um and then move to the other side of the desk mm-hmm. in um, in warehousing and in distribution. So, in fact, I went from selling freight to buying freight. Gotcha. Or freight services, rather. Um, and then about 29 years ago, I ended. I then moved from there. Then I moved to, yeah, I went to uh, manufacturing again, food manufacturing. And then I moved for 28 years in um, in 3PL, in warehousing. We ran con- I ran contract warehouses. Um, ended up for about 15 years as director of ops and retired from there not too, too long ago and mm-hmm. uh, fulfilled, fulfilled uh, dream number two, uh, which was uh, teaching. And so I ended up at uh, at Conestoga where I'd done a, a good amount of, of uh, part-time work. And um, I'm there, still there part-time, but um, it's what I'm doing now. So about 40 years in, in logistics, even though it wasn't called logistics when I started. <laughs> um and then everything I've done there, there for and there from and, and thereafter has been always supplemented with uh, some type of education. So I went from a bachelor's degree out of high school, because that's what everybody did um, for no good reason. <laughs> and I then moved to, I went to Ryerson, which is now called that, not Ryerson, um, and did mechanical technology to support my work in manufacturing, both of mining equipment and of aircraft. Um, I moved from that to, um, I got interested in teaching and I started teaching in about 1990, 89. And then I, I moved to a, um, a bachelor's degree in education Mm. and, uh, wanted to stay in business. So I did an MBA and then Mm. wanted to stay in teaching. So I did a master of education and I am presently enrolled in a doctorate in education uh at Athabasca and sometime I think it was in the late 1980s um I heard about through one of my employers uh the CITT designation and I went to a um I actually went to one of their uh, annual general meetings and and met and met many people and decided I would uh I'd go for my designation and the rest the other 2000 years is history <laughs> fair enough so yeah, so definitely well equipped to be able to speak on you know everything as the CITT trains and, and preps everyone for. And maybe for those that aren't fully aware, what uh, maybe a quick overview of what the CITT is and what the CCLP designation is. So the CITT was uh, invented, developed, founded in the late 1950s, and it was a group of uh, transportation professionals both um, buyers of service and and providers of that service, they decided that they wanted to formalize some semblance of education. And I won't call it training because it's not, you know, push this, push this button. It's why do we push the button? That's what I maintain. Uh, The difference is, but they did want to offer basically their employees. They wanted to offer them the ability to learn more about the industry in general and not trucking, but 
all of logistics, which again, it wasn't called back then. CITT stands for Canadian Institute of Traffic and Transportation. And I don't think the word traffic has been used in our business for probably two or three decades. True. Um, in any case, um, it moved forward. They developed a, uh, a, 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 a curriculum with some outcomes and decided this is what we'd really like graduates of with this designation to have. And um, they developed some textbooks. And many, many years later, they're, they're still at it. They are the primary provider. I'm not going to say premier because it, 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 you know, it, it infers status, but they're the primary deliverer of logistics education uh, from a Canadian perspective. And that part's really, really important, that there are many, many versions or means of, of becoming educated, industry educated, but the Institute offers a very, very, not pure, but a very, very different Canadian perspective on modes and, and their operation. Gotcha. And as far as you know, joining um, individuals, businesses, obviously there's some partners, kind of how is that, how do all those players um, you know, support and, and get involved within the CITT? Old school, the, uh, from, um, they've always had versions of course delivery. And that began as correspondence where you do your homework, put it in a mailbox and stand there for it to be marked and come back a couple, three weeks later. Um, that ended a, a while ago. Um, so then they moved to online training. Uh, and that is specific to the Institute. They deliver. Um, I'm their senior facilitator. I've written many, many of the courses and I still facilitate them after 30 years. <laughs> um, and what we do there is there are 10 distinct courses two primaries that are mandatory and that is transportation systems and logistics processes. So we take, take learners through the, the modes, including pipeline, which is still considered a mode. We take them through the intermediaries from uh, brokers, uh, freight brokers to customs brokers to uh, international freight forwarders. They get some good detail on that. And, and then we move to warehousing to some uh, distribution we do uh, a good amount on bills of lading, all things that then and now are still considered uh, crucial for for an employee to have um, to, or for someone that really, really wants to enhance uh, their contribution to their firm through the logistics training. So that's the, that's the basic. That's the one that's always been. They moved a few decades ago into the colleges and night school. I was a big part of of the delivery of some of those uh, through, throughout Ontario and in and, uh, Eastern Canada and BC. And uh, actually almost everywhere in Canada, mm -hmm. be more specific, offered some kind of, let's call it night school, as we used to call it. Um, then they moved to, the, as I said, the online platform, which is still exists the in the colleges still exists but i'm going to say that is that iteration is a little bit different in that the uh, there's partnerships have been developed we have some schools in canada that are delivering that have embedded the entire program into the uh, into their programs in the colleges and they have special designation with the school and be uh, be specific students don't get a special designation it's just there's a special relationship with the schools uh, there are some that are using some of the courses um, there are also some of the training institutes throughout Canada that are, have embedded parts of it some of the courses again uh, but overall it's a path to getting the 10 courses uh, if you've got a college or university degree specific to business or biz some business experience in in learning uh, there are there are exemptions available, but the first two and the final three courses that ends up in the uh, integrated logistics that speaks to how everything means something to everything, uh, cause and effect, so to speak. Uh, those five are are virtually mandatory, and the ones in between the five you can get an exemption from. That's so that's the typical path. Um, over the last uh, number of years, we've introduced the. Um, the executive, let's call it, path to the uh, to the designation, and that includes a challenge exam, a written exam that's um, 
that we developed a, a long, a, a good while ago. As I said, I think it's been running for about five, six, maybe more years. Don't correct me there, uh, or correct me if I'm wrong. Rather, <laughs> do correct me. Um, so we've got that, and so the challenge exam, and then that, if that is passed, if the um, if the applicant is successful, then you move to a final interview with two senior CITT designates, um, business people, and they take you through two and a half hours of fairly intensive questions that to the lay person would sound really intimidating, but the reality is to someone that truly knows their stuff, it's nothing at all. And I've seen both happen. Uh, there's no studying for it. Your experiences, are, which is what are challenged, your experiences specific to the questions asked or situation given, that's what we look for. And um, through that path of the exam, a written exam, and then uh, an interview, you can get uh, the CITT designation. Um, different from the in-class learning, but again, it's really geared to and being um, it's being embraced by those that have been in the business an awful long time. Many, many of my experiences with a lot of senior logistics folks and supply chain people is like, yeah, I'm not going back to school. I'm the <laughs> vice president of, of, of uh, 17 companies. So is there another way? But the funny thing is that everybody still is interested in getting the designation. Yeah, good point. And we see that, you know, obviously a lot of people in, in their profiles, whether it's on LinkedIn or emails, you know, are once they've gone through it, they definitely are, are proud to identify that they, they have the, the designation. And I, and I agree with your point is, you know, you get some, you know, senior people who've been in the industry, you know, 20, 30 years who would love to have it made a rules change, or it's just something they would like to have as part of, you know, their, their portfolio behind them. Um, but don't want to start from day one as like a new student. So the executive is a great way to pull those people in and use all their expertise and, you know, just fine tune anything needs to be fine tuned. But, you know, you can, you can validate that, yep, you, you have enough, you know, real life, real world experience that, you know, you qualify. And then obviously everyone else goes through the normal path or, you know, the hybrid based on the, the courses they've taken throughout school. So it's really kind of open to everybody who's interested, whether you're fresh, you know, new into the industry or someone who's been at it for years and years, there's, there's a path you can take to, to get your designation. Indeed. Um, and, there was one, two situations that I'm aware of where very, very senior employees of companies that we all know the names of, they took the program because, uh, and their comment was, I'm expecting all of my employees to take this program. Uh, I'm going to take it. So I know what I'm talking about. So that was the one, but yes, for the, for the, for the, pri uh, the majority, there is that, the, the split that you spoke of. So that's one way to join as an individual. They've, they've opened other paths uh, that not to a designation, but certainly to be part of the organization um, and its benefits. One is as a business, you can get a, an affiliate there. And that's for um, a logistics employer. And all it means, well, not all it means, it, and it means that this employer has been, in fact, certified in, in by the CITT because the employer has, in fact, signed their code of ethics and they, they maintain CITT's code of ethics. And that's the, on the one side. So for potential um, employees or potential buyers of those services, um, it tells them that uh, there's, there's a very, very high standard held to, to this company. To people, to employers, if, uh, these business are those employers looking for people. It tells the applicants that, hey, this place uh, has got holds, uh, is held to some fairly tough standards. They've decided to be part, to partner with the, the CITT. Uh, so that helps in that capacity specific, perhaps to hiring and, and such. Um, and they're the from the partnership side, and there are many of those. Uh, again, it's they have to assign that, the, that they adhere to the CITT's very stringent code of ethics specific to our business, our industries. Um, they are endorsed by the CITT, and there's other benefits involved. And I, I don't, I, I don't know en enough about them to go really, really in detail. All of this is available uh, on the site CITT.ca. Um, Anyways, those are the those are the ways in there, and also the ways for employers and businesses in general to be part of that about the institute and and its network. And network, of course, is the key word. Yeah, and that's that's probably a great point to bring up. Obviously, between you know the learning that's involved and, and the processes, and just you know a great understanding of the industry. Clearly, if you're in any of the classroom sessions. 
uh, you know, in person, I mean, even virtual, you, you get a networking piece too, right? So you're, you're with like-minded people kind of going down the same path, but obviously maybe gearing out to different roles or different careers within the industry, but you have a kind of a common bond. So, you know, between, you know, probably general meetings and, and other things that happen at the CITD hosts, uh, or just networking in general, you, you've, you've got a framework as we know, the industry is, you know, a lot of it's who, you know, we all kind of know the same people, you know, one way or another. So this really strengthens that bond, uh, having gone through the program with, with probably like-minded people. We, uh, I t- at the, the, at the college I teach in there, the, 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 uh, trucking program, uh, truck, truck driver program, um, in the, in their business and, and get con ed courses. And number one thing, when I mention it to them is, you know, what everybody else says is what's in this for me, why would I bother? Right. And, um, even that's grown over the number of the last number of years. And, and there are blogs, there's regular webinars. There was one on just recently, or is it recently or coming up? on um, bills of lading, everything you need to know about bills of lading and probably more. Uh, we've got Inco terms or it's a, an annual event for delivering what are Inco terms and how do they work? It goes on and on. I did one there a number of years ago on food grade transport, uh, things like that. So that's a benefit. The networking. Yeah. We can't say enough about mm-hmm. the networking. Uh, there are, there's an annual general meeting, each of the regions of Canada, or most of the regions of Canada, have area councils. Toronto Area Council being the massive one, uh, and everything from uh, charity events, golf events, um, get-togethers. I'm going to one uh, on on Wednesday, uh, which is simply a, a just a meet and greet, and I'm taking some students to that just to understand what networking is all about. The other advantage um, that happened to me. Uh, I w- it was in a real life workplace. We needed a sp- very, very specialized trailer for a new customer. And uh, my boss, who felt he was well networked without um, without any kind of designations, he decided he'd go find it. And I said, I'll find it first. And I it took me two phone calls, without exaggerating, <laughs> um, to CITT people that I either knew or knew what they did. And the designation, for whatever reason, it's it's the camaraderie. People just get you a free pass into free information. And I had a manufacturer of those trailers within probably 20 minutes. My bo- I walked all the way up to his office just to rub it in. But <laughs> the realities are is that there's many, many professionals that are that hold the designation. And um, most, if not everyone, is more than happy to give you far, far more of their time than maybe you even need. But they will help you out um, through a, a very business-based um questions or, or challenges there's even a blog uh, uh i just saw yesterday somebody was looking for information on mexico uh there's a there's a uh, you can log on and just ask questions and all of the professionals all of us see it and we and and that person's questions were answered um in fairly short order wild well, and that's the thing like you talk about the career benefits of having the designation i think a lot of people think you know what what doors is open for me as far as a, a role or potential um, career? And obviously there is that you can partner with businesses that, you know, have decided to partner with the CITT. So, you know, you're aligned as far as your goals. But I think the bigger piece is kind of what you just spoke to, which is it's, it's the, the networking and the doors it opens up and it's just, it's a different, you know, thought process, but you're, you're, you're very well in tune with the industry having gone through all the different programs, but you also know a lot of like-minded people. So people that, if, especially if you're new in the industry, you probably wouldn't know or it'd take a lot longer to kind of make those connections than, you know, had you not uh, gone through the program. Yeah, it uh, it gets you many, many, many associates in very short order. And I'm, I'm not going to discount the learning as well. It's it's incredible. I remember um, applying it. I When I taught it or teach it, I still maintain people can get their money back on on some savings on on the natures of how to do claims and how to do <laughs> bills of lading and all of that stuff. You pay for the designation fairly quickly. Um, but yeah, that nothing can nothing can can uh, be as it could be better than the networking that goes on. Yeah, no, well said. And I mean, that's a great, great overview of, of the CIT and TT and, you know, the designation involved with it. So I, I just want to highlight all those items with, with the listeners and kind of get them thinking if they, you know, haven't been involved or don't know enough about it and myself included, you know, in, in kind of the world I play and it's, we know all the people involved who have the designation, but traditionally in our world, you know, on the, the vendor and supplier side, we don't usually have it, but it's, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, something to look at, you know, for everyone involved in the industry to, you know, to can be better versed uh, with everything that, that gets touched within what we do. Yeah, for sure. It's um, 
from, as, as you point out, from learners to businesses to partners, um, everyone can, uh, there's, a, there's a ton of benefit from, uh, from being a part of the organization in whatever capacity. Agreed. Well said. Well, look, we, we thank you for, for taking a few minutes to kind of walk us through the, the high level of, of what's involved with the program. And, uh, you know, everyone can check, I guess, CITT.ca to, to find more information about, you know, what's available close to them as far as uh, training and programs and, you know, the different requirements as you touched on to see where they fit and how they can get involved. So we, we thank you for you for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. That concludes today's episode. I want to thank Paul for joining us and to catch up on past episodes, check out transportationexchangepodcast.ca. Until next time, thanks for listening.